Hey guys, my name is Wildcard and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for subscribing and following my contents. And uh, yeah, some big news came out of England. Uh, I think two days ago, the Emperor himself, Eddie Jones, is about to relinquish his throne in uh, as England rugby head coach at 2023 after the 2023 World Cup. So he's uh, courted a day. He's drawn a line that he's gonna step down after the World Cup. And that is it for him. Uh, not sure where he goes. Maybe come back to Australia. Not sure. But yeah, Eddie Jones. Um, so as a result of this uh, and the spring tour coming up, obviously, Eddie Jones has announced the squad, the England squad for the 2021 spring tour. Uh, he, had a, he had an interview where he talks about how his aim for this t squad is to build towards the Rugby World Cup in 2023 to win the World Cup. He uh, essentially... Yeah, called a number of pretty big names. And a lot of people are a bit surprised by this. And also, Eddie Jones has been receiving a lot of criticism for sticking to his, you know, base and not giving new players a go. One of the biggest critics for Eddie Jones is that he didn't run, he didn't play a player named uh, Simmons, Sam Simmons. And I think it was Simmons. We'll have a look at him in a minute. But basically, everybody thought he did really well in the clubs and Eddie Jones didn't give him a go. And and he was selected for the Lions tour as a result of his outstanding performance in club rugby. Uh, so he skipped England, playing for England altogether, went straight into the Lions tour. And he had, a, I think he had um, maybe half a test in the against the Springboks as well in Lions tour. So it's not just a, a cannon fonder. So, some very interesting selections, some very young players. New number 10 for the England team. And, uh, yeah, and Eddie Jones seems to have put the dagger in one more time over Australian rugby uh, for what they did to him. And uh, by potentially locking up Michael Liner's son. Yeah, so he's drafted Liner's son. We should have a look at him in a second. In the squad, and basically, yeah, uh, if he gets a run at England, he won't be able to play for Australia, despite the fact that he's expressed interest um, to play for Australia. So, yeah, let's have a go through this article just very quickly. So, a few of the really huge players that's been dropped is uh, Jamie George, Michael Vinopola, George Ford, Billy Vinopola, and Elliot Daly. Uh, he's also not selected, but Eddie Jones said that's because of injury. So, like, Jamie, uh, Jamie George, one of the, I don't, I don't know why you would sack a hooker. It's pretty weird to see a hooker get dropped because, like, line, like the job the hooker is really just about setting up those set pieces, getting those line outs right. And Jamie George hasn't really strike me as that poor of a line out or uh, a set piece player to get dropped on the team. So it's really strange to see that they drop a hooker. It's generally you don't drop players um, like hookers. So Jamie George got, got the got the knife and uh, Mako and Billy Vinopola. Mako Vinopola played in the Lions tour and yeah, I thought he was gonna be uh, okay. So Eddie Jones basically saying this is the end of his campaign for England. He's been the longest running England coach in England's history. Uh, so some of the, and he also issued that uh, basically like a warning for some of the players that's been underperforming, including Owen Farrell, who's been criticized a lot for underperformance. And that is probably largely to, to do with Saracens being relegated. And basically they're not able to play as many games as they would normally would to stay in shape. So England had a pretty terrible Six Nations campaign this year as a result of the, you know, a lot of their players playing, core players playing for the Saracens and not being in shape, including Michael Vinopola, Elliot Daly, who were just grossly out of shape during the Six Nations because the fact that they weren't able to play for the Saracens uh, as a result of the relegation and the COVID lockdowns. So it's, yeah, well, let's have a go. So yeah, Michael Liner's son, Lewis Liner, yeah, gets drafted to England. So they had the first dab at him and uh, he could potentially be out of reach for Australia. Uh, I mean, good for him. England will be a terrible place to play rugby and live. And uh, yeah, enjoy Enjoy never winning a World Cup, mate. Anyway, uh, so have a look at let's have a look at some of these big names that's been kicked out. So yeah, uh, this is probably one of the biggest one. George George Ford, he was literally like 
I think last year or maybe the year before, Squidge Rugby did a thing claiming that he was the best fly half in the world. Yeah, uh, this was in, I think it was in 2020. Uh, big call from Squidge. Didn't, uh, I did not agree that he was the best in the world, but for England's strategy, the kicking game strategy, uh, Ford really was like the best piece of the puzzle for England's strategy. And the fact that he's dropped shows to me that um, England may be looking at changing their strategy. Maybe they're not going to be looking at the kicking game as heavily relied on as they did for the World Cup, even though it did yield very high success. And it was the result of their lack of set piece play that led to their loss to the South Africans, not really because of their kicking game. So yeah, so there might be a change of uh, change of um, what do you call it? Change of strategy coming from the top down from Eddie Jones. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, again, Jamie George, very surprised that he got dropped. A hooker, um, fifty nine caps, only thirties of age, so he can definitely take go to the next World Cup. Um, very interesting how this decision was made and I'm not sure who's actually going to fill his role um, some of it because I don't, I don't really follow England club rugby so we shall see how, how the England rugby set piece goes I thought he would have kept people like Jamie George as just for the experience because the biggest weakness for the England team in the World Cup is their four pack it's, it's, it's the set piece it's the scrum it's the line outs and they got dominated by the South Africans uh, I'm very surprised to see him get dropped uh, Billy Villapola to be fair, he did look out of shape during Six Nations. Uh, again, very experienced campaigner for 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 England. Big number eight, big high running number eight. Maybe a bit out of shape. He's still young, so he can still make it back into the squad before the World Cup. Uh, his older brother, Marco Vinopola. I am surprised that he got dropped as well. Marco was criticized as well for not being in shape in Six Nations. But that was like early this year. So like January, February this year. He got in shape after. He was selected for the Lions tour. And he did like he did okay in the Lions tour. Uh, he was in shape. He was performed well. He, he actually had like a scrummaging dominance over the spring box at times. So he was pretty good. I wasn't sure why he was dropped. Maybe, yeah, I'm not too sure why he was dropped. So again, he played poorly in the Six Nations. But Eddie Jones maybe didn't watch the Lions tour. He did uh, probably decently, I thought. So... Uh, you know, Mako got dropped as well. Uh, and this guy who didn't get dropped, uh, let's talk about him in a minute. So Elliot Daly, uh, the fullback, played really well. But he's actually really poor. I think he probably should get dropped, to be fair. So he was selected for the Lions tour, and he was just absolutely poor on the, in the Lions tour. Uh, I think he came on in the maybe the second game, second test where the Lions lost. He came on the field for the second half, maybe the last 20 minutes, and it was just like mistakes everywhere, like drop balls, missed tackles. Like the amount of mistake... The amount of penalties and mistakes he gave away was like uh, like uh, unprecedented in, 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 in the, for the amount of time that it was on the field. I, I remember seeing his stats; it was horrendous. So, not sure why he's actually not just officially dropped, but he's not in the team. Uh, Eddie Jones saying because his because of his injury uh, injury at the moment. Another guy I didn't make the team. I thought was very surprising. This is a guy that I thought England should have probably. I thought this would be. I thought he was he's the next. John Lomu, to be honest. He's so physically dominant, so devastating. He's debuted against Australia in 2019, and he just destroyed Australian backline. Like, he ran over uh, Halapetti like he was nobody, like he was just, like he was a little schoolboy, just carved up the Australian backline. Uh, like, he looked so impressive. He's like 130 kilos or something, and he plays winger. And he's like, what, six foot two or something it's just an absolute giant yeah here it is uh 112 kilos 192 centimeters it's just an absolute giant and only 23 years of age as well so i'm surprised eddie jones didn't give him another shot or give him a, a bit more at least give him put him on a have a, have, a, have a few bench games or something but man he's not selected uh, i thought he was the future i like i literally could not believe how good this guy was uh, when he debuted against Australia, he was only 21. So he also played this year against America and against, who was the other team? Canada. So he did perform pretty well in those games as well. I'm not going to lie. So it wasn't like he played really poorly against America. I think he's got to try it against America. But yeah, not in that squad. Uh, so Eddie Jones, I thought it was questionable, some of these uh, decisions. So I'm baffled. Baffled at this. Not like he's literally could be the next big big thing. He could be your next John Alomu. For England rugby, but yeah, we shall see. So Eddie Jones is one of those guys. 
that focuses more about politics. I think it's probably more than actual selections a little bit. As you can see that uh, instead of selecting someone who's actually potentially the next big thing for New England on the win spot, um, especially if he wants to... Yeah, yeah I mean, anyway. Um, he decides to pick guys that's like... You know, he decides to pick things that's... Uh, like controversial picks. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. So he picked Michael Liner's son. Michael Liner is a former Wallaby fly half from the 1980s. Um, you know, last time the Wallabies beat the All Blacks in Eden Park in 1986, he was the fly half. To be honest, yeah. Um, and he had, you know, the Liner has expressed his um, desire to play for Australia instead of for England. So very surprised that Eddie Jones caught him into the squad so if he gets a debut like he gets a run then yeah it's just uh he's not gonna be able to play for australia anymore uh, i think this like yeah so he, I, I like for like so, yeah there's some strange rules that he can if he doesn't play for england for four years or something but yeah um basically it's done so very surprised for me to see that you know eddie jones is focusing yeah lewis liner to focusing on more of these politics than actual i don't know making sense i will see how england goes We'll see how England goes. Uh, another guy, this guy, uh, actually a very prominent player for England. And I thought this was a really good decision. Marcus Smith. He plays for Harlequins. He played really, I think Harlequins won the club's rugby for, for uh, in England. So he literally won club rugby and then got caught up into England rugby to play for, uh, to play against America and then played against Canada. He played really, really well. A lot of flair, a lot of running, really, really excellent uh, running rugby and excellent kicking as well. He's literally the future of England fly half, right? And then he got caught up right away to the Lions tour and debut for the Lions against the Sharks like over the next week. So in like four weeks, he played for three different teams and just keeps going up on the ladder. So Marcus Smith and he's really, really like... Uh, yeah, and also he just destroyed the um, the Sharks with the, the with the Lions team. Just magic left and right. Uh, really, really good game playmaker. So uh, this was an excellent pick. Marcus, Marcus Smith for England rugby. Um, so Oren Farrell has been criticized a lot these days. Uh, he's still the captain and Eddie Jones, as, you, as I mentioned before, has issued a warning for him to, to lift. Uh, he was one of the members from the Saracens team who were not able to play last year. And his kicking has been, his kicking has been a little bit off. His kicking game has been a little bit off. His overall attack pattern has been flat. And as a 12, he's really not making that much of an impact in terms of breaking through the lines and being able to link up with his outside center that much so he's been criticized a lot for poor gameplay but Owen Farrell has been you know oh uh Eddie Jones's like adopted son essentially so we'll I don't see him getting dropped but you know um he really does need to lift this game if he wants to you know not embarrass Eddie Jones for favoritism and uh yeah that's Owen and his dad is head coach of Ireland so maybe Owen is doing is trying to put Eddie Jones out of business and get his dad to come coach. Father and son ruling England rugby. Uh, ben Youngs is selected for England. I think he was, he made himself unavailable for the Lions tour. So he didn't actually get to play in the Lions tour. He went on a bit of a break, but Ben Youngs is a pretty solid performer for England rugby on the scrum hub position. One of 109 caps, one of the, he has more caps than Owen Farrell, one of the most experienced scrum halves uh, players in the England team. Um, and also the big man, the big boy, Manu Tuilangi, he's back. He has been injured all year this season. So, <clears throat> so England was not able to, were really missing his, uh, his crash rugby in the center position. So yeah, one of the most, a guy that scored a try against the All Blacks in the Rugby World Cup 2019. That, yeah, really devastating. is his devastating running game. So, Tui Lange, he's back. And, uh, yeah, we shall see how he, how he performs. And one of the reasons, in fact, that came out of the Six Nations, poor Six Nations report from England, was that uh, players like Tui Lange was injured and that has led to their extremely poor results from the Six Nations this year. There you go. Uh, Anthony Watson, the cyborg, he's also selected, uh, pretty obviously. He played for the Lions tour uh he i thought he was really well for lions team and yeah he's i don't know any everything he's just athletic freak uh, i don't know what to say extremely good with the ball extremely good running game extremely good under the high ball uh outstanding player for england 
and uh, to only 27 years of age. Definitely can see him uh, taking England into a couple more World Cups. And yeah, very, very good. And he's uh, famously for taking a shoulder charge from Son of Bill Williams and live to tell the story. So he's definitely a cyborg. Uh, we have Johnny May, the winger for England rugby. Many people think that he's not really in form. Like in my opinion, Johnny May at 31 years of age probably should have given uh, Joe Thock and a singer a go and maybe starting to consider a replacement for him. Johnny May has been very outstanding for England, but he was not selected for the Lions tour. Maybe because the way he plays, uh, I'm not too sure. He's not really good at kicking. He's just more of a running and try scoring guy whilst being really, really good at it. Uh, in the Rugby World Cup 2019, I thought he was probably the most informed Johnny May we've ever seen. And he was literally like devastating scoring tries for England. Every time he gets the ball, he looked threatening. And then since 2019, his form has been just been dropping. He hasn't looked as devastating as he was in the 2019 World Cup. So we shall see uh, how he travels going into the 2023 World Cup. And then we have here, this is Henry Slade, another very experienced uh, player for England at a center's position. I don't see him play much over Milan Pola, but yeah, he's also a very experienced campaigner for England. And then we have Dan Robs Robson for England as well. Uh, scrum half reserve for England, 14 caps, 29 years of age, 170 centimeters high, 82 kilograms. Uh, yes, this guy I want to talk about, Kyle Simbin Sinclair. Uh, Sinclair was, you know, one of those, you know, he's been up and down a lot these days. So in the Rugby World Cup, he was really, really good against Australia, really, really good again against New Zealand, and then really, really poor. Uh, not really poor, he got knocked out against, like, two minutes into the uh, final against South Africa. So he would never really get to play in the grand final, in the World Cup final to see how good he actually was against the Springboks. So finally he was, uh, and then the Lions tour came around. So the Springboks didn't play in 2020. So this whole year where England didn't get to play Springboks. And in 2021, so this year, uh, the Lions tour came around. Sinclair was not selected. And they had a bit of cry. He literally cried on you know, like one of the interviews, like cried. So um, Sinclair, uh, and then and then I guess, and then one of the, I think one of the uh, Irish props or uh, one of the props that was selected got injured. So Sinclair got caught up. And then he actually got uh, start. Get, he got to start to play in the test matches against the Springboks. And we finally got to see how Sinclair would have fared against the Springboks scrum. And quite frankly, not as good as I was expecting. Not as good as he looked against in the 2019 Rugby World Cup. So we really didn't know how good he was in 2019. Like He's definitely dropped a lot of form since then. That almost led to him not selected like well, basically he wasn't selected until someone got injured so yeah we shall see what form he's going to be in coming into the rugby world cup he's extremely talented uh i in my mind in 2019 he was probably the best prop uh tight head prop in the world i thought he was the best tight head prop, but just the fact that he's the fact that we did i didn't get to see how he would have gone up against um the beast but just based on his performance Leading into the Rugby World Cup final, I thought he was the best prop. Like his running game, his scrummaging, everything was just superb. So we shall see what form he's in come going into the next World Cup. But at the moment, his form is maybe like an A minus at the moment. Uh, Sam Underhill, another very experienced campaigner for for England. Uh, flanker, absolute just workhorse for England. Quite young, still 25 years of age, 186 uh, centimeters high. Uh, 103 kilograms and 24 caps for England. Uh, one of the very superb players for England in the flanker position. Joe Muller! By the way, if you ever want your um, prostate checked out, Joe Muller can do that for you for free. As Alan Jones has found discovered. So uh, Joe, the, um, <clears throat> the prostate doctor, Muller, he is uh, back in England rugby. And he's a prop position, so he wasn't playing. I don't think he played. Did he play in the Six Nations this year? He, he definitely came, Maybe he came off the bench, but I'm not too... I can't really remember, to be honest. But yeah, Joe Marley is selected again, uh, and he's more than happy to check your prostate. He got banned for doing that against Alan Jones, I think. But yeah, but you know, you know, if, uh, you know, he's plenty of experience in that front, uh, a future career to pursue for, for, the, uh, for the big man, Joe Marley. 
Uh, 31 years of age, 183 centimeters, 114 kilograms, 72 test cap for England. Uh, next, we have uh, Luke Cowan Dickey, another very good English player. Hook. Oh yeah, so he will be the replacement for for Jamie George, right? So I guess they could run a new guy for the still you you for for a hooker position. Even if you have Jamie George just on the like uh, in the training squad for the experience. Will be pretty good, even if you don't use him. But yeah, anyway, Eddie Jones, he's the emperor. I'm just some random guy on YouTube. He knows. He gets paid millions of dollars. I get paid millions of cents. No, actually, I don't even get paid millions. If I get paid millions of cents, that'd be really good. Millions of cents in Zimbabwe dollars, maybe. But yeah, anyway, um, Luke Allen Dickey, another really pick for England. Tom Curry, probably the best flanker for England. He plays, he's 30, 23 years of age, only 33 caps. 185 centimeters, 110 kilograms. He played in the Lions tour. And uh, yeah, he's really, really good. Really good scrummager as well. Just very, very physical, dominant. Just, yeah, everything you want from a flanker. Uh, probably like, yeah, incredible physicality for English team. Maybe one of the most, if not the most physical, phys like physical, physical players in the England four pack. Uh, Mario Toje, he has been criticized a lot for giving away too many penalties in the Six Nations this year. And a lot of the reasons that England lost, people attributed to him giving away penalties. So he's a walking three points uh, for the teams playing against England. However, he played really, really, really well in the Lions tour. He literally gave away zero penalties in the Lions tour. So there was a joke that after the Lions tour, um, what's his name? What's the coach's name? Warren Gatlin. Warren Goatlin. Okay, Warren Goatlin was talking about um, Mario Toji not giving a penalty away for the first time in 23 years. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, so yeah, so he definitely improved and stepped up in the Lions tour and a very, very experienced campaigner for England. And there's been calls for him to be the England captain. Um, but I think maybe not, I, I don't know what he's like around real life, but I thought uh, as a captain, you really can't be giving away that many penalties. But if he plays perfectly like he's been doing Lions tour, it could be a case made for Mario Toje to take over the captaincy over, over um, Owen Farrell. Uh, another guy that is very, very good for England rugby, Courtney Laws. Uh, the, another lock, just stable for England rugby. Again, they, him and Mario Toje has a very, very similar play style. Courtney Laws is slightly lower in penalty counts, but he's not as aggressive as Mario Toje. Mario Toje is extremely aggressive in the breakdowns. Doing those, uh, trying to get those charge downs over the halfback, extremely aggressive. Uh, Loss does that, but not to that extent. But yeah, very solid player for a lock position for the England team. 32 years of age, two meters and one centimeter tall, 115 kilograms, and 87 test caps for England. Uh, and finally, Sam Simmons, the guy who doesn't even have an England profile. This is a guy that was snubbed by Eddie Jones in the Six Nation campaign this year, and as a FU by Warren Goatlin. He had selected Sam Simmons for the Lions team without him actually even play for England in this year. So, uh, in, and Eddie Jones got a lot of uh, media pressure for this, for not selecting him in the Six Nations this year. And uh, he seems to uh, given up his own free will of being the head coach and selections and decided to base selection on the media and Warren Gatlin. So yeah, S Sam Simmons, uh, his performance in the in the Lions tour was okay. He came off the bench, didn't really stand out too much. Uh, I, th I think he, he he was playing, he played a lot better against the clubs in the Lions tour, but in the test matches, I don't remember him being that particularly impressive. But yeah, let me know what you think if you're an England fan. So some of the lesser known players, from the England lineup, let's just go through all of them very quickly. Jamie uh, Blamier, two caps for England, a 23 year old coming in from Newcastle Falcons. Um, also in the squad, Callum Chick, uh, back rower, um, yeah, uh, coming in from Newcastle Falcons again. Another Falcons player here, Trevor Davison, a, a prop. Um, yeah, uh, have a look at him if you're interested. And we have Alexander Lombarded, 
uh, 24 years of age, one cap for England. And we have Char Charlie Ewells. Is that what? Ewells? Charlie Ewells. Uh, 28 caps for England, plays for Bath. 26 years of, years of age, uh, another lock position for England. He could be potentially uh, moving up into the starting squad or bench for England. Uh, Ellis Genj, uh, 30 caps for England, a prop position uh, from the Leicester Tigers. Uh, Joe Hayes, uh, a debutant for England. Uh, Johnny Hill, another debutant for England. Uh, Ted Hill, two caps for England and flanker position, plays for uh, Worcester Warriors. Uh, Jack Kenningham. Uh, yeah, he's. He, I think he's debuting. He doesn't even have a profile. Uh, very difficult to find him. Uh, Lewis Ludlin. He is 25 years of age, 10 caps for England. Uh, Northampton Saints, flanker position. Uh, Lewis Ludlow, also debuting for England. No profile information. George Martin, one cap for England, lock position, Leicester Tigers, 20 years of age, very young. Benno Obano, another English uh, prop, uh, potentially debuting for England. Gabriel Oge, he is a Wasp player, 23 years of age, uh, potentially debuting for England. Uh, Sam Riley, another debutant potentially for England. Uh, he was the under 20 player for England. Uh, Sales Shark, uh, Beaven Rudd, let's see if we can, there's no picture for him in the sales shark website for some reason. So this guy is, um, this is, maybe we can find a picture here. Yeah, that's Bevan. Bevan, that's what Bevan looks like in case you want to know. Will Stewart, 12 caps for England, Bath Rugby, 25 years of age, uh, another prop. So let's go to the backs quickly, finishing off this thing. George uh, Furbank, four caps for England. Uh, fullback position for England, Northampton Saints. Oli Lawrence potentially debuting for England. Uh, Max Mallins, Saracens, eight caps, 24 years of age for England. Uh, fullback, uh, Joe Markin. I thought he played for England. I, I swear I've seen him uh, at least on the bench or something. But apparently he hasn't played for England. There's no, no profile here for, for England rugby. Um, Raphael Quirk. Uh, Sales Sharks scrum half an under 20 player for England being called up to this looks like a CGI photo of him that, doesn't that this look like a f computer generated like game character are you kidding me he looks so generic um, okay uh, Adam Radwan apparently has one cap for England uh, so this is what he looks like in case you're wondering um, yeah 23 years of age uh, and then we have Harry Randall, two caps for England and scrum half position. Uh, Bristol Bears, uh, Lawrence Slee Sleeholm, uh, Northampton Saints, 21 years of age, 10 caps for the England under 20s, uh, potentially debuting for England full time. Freddie Stewart, Leinster Tigers, fullback, 20 years of age. Uh, again, he's a under 20 player, called up to the England camp. And lastly, Mark Atkinson. 31 years of age. Uh, he's potentially debuting for England at age of 31. And uh, yeah, um, that's the guy in case you wanted to know what he looks like. Yeah, there you go. Potentially making a debut at 31 years of age for England. Uh, interesting. Anyway, guys, that is the uh, news from the Northern Hemisphere. Something pretty big. Big changes for Eddie Jones. Um, I wonder where he's going to go after... His England Rugby World Cup run. Maybe he'll come back to Australia. But yeah, you know, picking Lionel's son is pretty much a dagger, a final dagger in Australia, right? Like, you know, just before he's about to leave for England Rugby, he's just make sure that he locks up a, pl uh, a talent who has expressed interest to play for Australia, to play, f lock it up for England. Um, yeah, so a final gift, parting gift. From old mate Eddie Jones. Ah, mate, yeah, mate, yeah, mate, nah, mate, yeah, mate, nah, nah, mate, yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts, and uh, I'll talk to you guys a little bit later with the Springbok All Black selections. Thanks for watching. Cheers.